This week, we're going to take a look at a second type of analysis of variance that can be done, and that's the repeated measures ANOVA. So when we talked about a one-way ANOVA, this was thought of as a natural extension from the two independent sample t-test that we looked at. Well, we also looked at a t-test when we had dependent data, and a repeated measures ANOVA in many ways extends that paired t-test to more than two samples. So what we have first is, well, let's look at an example. And this example may seem familiar because we looked at this same data set in the chapter two notes. So in this data set, we looked at the bacterial count on scrubs over four different time periods of the day. So there was a random sample of 19 doctors and their, the bacterial content was measured on a particular part of their scrubs four different times. The data sets available on StatCrunch, it's in a slightly different format than what we used before, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. The question we'd like to answer with this data is, do we have evidence of a difference in the mean bacterial count over the course of a day? So if you think about this, this has a similar structure to the ANOVA problems that we encountered in the previous notes. It seems like we have one response variable. So remember our response was the quantitative variable that we wanted to compare across groups. And it seems reasonable that our response would be the bacterial count. And then we also have a factor that's available. Our factor was the qualitative variable that we thought had some effect on our response. And when we, when we referred to that variable as qualitative, um, it just was a nominal or ordinal variable. And in this case, we have time of day that we're interested in. So let's take a little bit closer look at the data that was collected, though. So if we think about this first row of data, we had a measurement of 22 at the start of the day, 23 before lunch, 26 after lunch, and 30 at the end of the day. For the one-way ANOVA that we talked about, those four measurements need to be independent of each other. So there can be no relationship between them. But if you think about the measurements that were taken, those four measurements are all dependent upon that first subject or the first doctor that was sampled. So at that point, we have a major problem that we've run into. We violated the assumption of independent samples so that one-way ANOVA that we discussed last week is no longer applicable. So what we need is we need to alter our analysis plan to take into account the fact that we now have dependent samples. So the goal of any ANOVA procedure is to explain as much variation in the response as possible. So recall our response was the bacterial count. I want to be able to explain why those bacterial counts varied so much. So if you think about this example, I need to think about the data that was collected and what could have influenced the spread that we saw in the counts that were collected. In the data that we've got, it looks like there's actually two potential sources of variability. Now the first we already talked about, time of day seems to be a factor. You start the day with clean scrubs on, by the end of the day, anything could have happened. So it seems reasonable that as you progress throughout the day, your bacterial count's going to change. But there's actually another source of variability there, and that's the subject. So we had 19 doctors in our sample. It stands to reason that they're not all in the exact same places all day long. So not only do our structures our scrub bacterial counts differ because of the time of day, there's also added variability because we looked at different subjects. So what we need to do is we need to modify our approach so that I can incorporate both of those sources of variability into this ANOVA model to help me figure out if there really is a difference in the mean bacterial count over the course of this day. So what we're going to have to do instead of looking at the one-way ANOVA menu in StatCrunch, we're going to have to go use the two-way menu. So 
what we've got here is we have a screenshot of what the data looks like in StatCrunch. And you'll notice now that you have three columns. So we have three variables in our data set. The first variable that you've got is the bacterial count. That was our response. That was the quantitative variable that we want to compare across the groups. And then we've got two additional columns. So we have time of day and we have the subject. That accounts for our two sources of variation. Now, you'll notice on our subject row that we started about at row 13. So we have subject 13 through 19 at the start of the day. And then that repeats subjects 1 through 19 for before lunch. If you continued to scroll down, we'd have subjects 1 through 19 for after lunch and then for the end of the day. So the question that we've got is, how do we incorporate this added variability into StatCrunch? How exactly is that two-way ANOVA menu going to work? So our two-way ANOVA menu is under our STAT menu. If we go down to ANOVA, um, we can select our two-way option. And the dialog box that's going to appear is very similar to the one-way ANOVA box. It asks you what column your response is in. So in our case, that was the bacterial count. And then it asks you for two factors. So it asks you for a row factor and it asks you for a column factor. Now, to be perfectly honest, doesn't matter which order you put those in. Um, so in my uh, screen, we have time of day as our row, we have subject as our column. If you flip those, you'll get identical output. So don't get caught up into which needs to go with the row and which needs to go with the column. Now, at this point, we can't hit Calculate. It's very important that you click Next because you're always going to have to select Fit Additive Model when doing a repeated measures ANOVA. Um, that's an assumption that makes every, uh, all the calculations work out. So by default, any time we're dealing with repeated measures ANOVA, that needs to be selected. Now, once that's been checkmarked, you can hit Calculate, and you'll get the results that you also see in the notes. Now, the results that you've got look very similar to the one-way ANOVA results. StatCrunch tells you your response was your bac bacterial count, and then you've got two factors, time of day and subject. And then below that, you have an ANOVA table, which was similar to the output that you saw before. Now, in this output, the one thing that you may notice is now you've got three rows to that table. So you have one row that deals with time of day, the second row deals with subject, and the third row deals with error. Before, we only had two rows. We had whatever our factor was, and we had the error row. So let's take a closer look at this output. So the goal of our study was to compare the mean bacterial count across the four times a day. So from all of the F statistics and p-values, I have to pick out the appropriate one to use. And in this case, since we want to compare across our four times, I need to use the F statistic and the p-value in the row that's labeled time of day. So you'll notice that we have an F that was 22.7. We had a p-value that was very small, less than 0 .0001, which results in the conclusion that we should reject the null hypothesis. So there is evidence of at least one difference in the mean bacterial count across the four times a day. Now, at this point, in the one-way ANOVA, we started looking at multiple comparisons. Because again, that doesn't really address the full question. Doesn't tell you where the differences are. And you may have noticed in the StatCrunch dialog box, you're missing the ability to check for the multiple comparisons. Unfortunately, StatCrunch won't do these calculations for us. So you may notice in the notes that I have done the multiple comparisons in a different program called Minitab.